After indictments, ethics scandals, and bribery scandals, the court has decided to silence one of its critics. The court officers attempted to prevent rent wars from taping the incredibly long lines outside the Brooklyn Housing Court. security things going on. You have ID? Can yeah. I see your ID? Yeah, sure. Well, wait a minute. No. You don't have ID? A, no, no, no. I, I don't want to show it. My name's Ronan Amano. Okay, and you are? Do you I'm mind? Sergeant 646. Six. I do mind. You do mind? Yeah, I'm 646. Six. You're 646. Six. Sergeant 646. Six. Okay. Well, I'm asking you, do you have ID? All right, well. Because we don't want people taking pictures. You are certainly entitled to take pictures in the building. James! Absolutely entitled to take pictures in the building. Let's take a picture of him. Absolutely entitled to take pictures in the building. And as far as an interview, I have this no comment. This is, a, this is a sergeant for the court officers. He's I'm telling us to be I'm not telling you anything. I have no comment. That is my official and, response. And my official response is no comment. Okay, well, no, no, but you just I explain something to me. James wants to ask you a few questions. I, I have no comment. Take, take off your coat. So we I got, have no we're comment. We're going to do a shot, set shot. shot Office of Court Administration. No, no, I, I, I intend to. O OCS, I know. OCS. But I have no comment. Okay. That's my official response. And after their attempt to scare Rent Wars Away failed, they tried to use the NYPD to violate Rent Wars' First Amendment rights. But the police weren't interested. Here at the Brooklyn Housing Court at 141 Livingston Street, you can see the line. It goes on forever. And so do some rent issues here at, uh, in Brooklyn. Here to at the Brooklyn Housing Court, as you can see, this line goes on forever. And so do some of the issues here in Brooklyn. And I'm joined today by Edel Danzi. Good, good morning, Edel. Good morning. Edel, could you uh, perhaps tell me uh, some of your issues and why you're here today? Well, I'm here due to the fact that um, I haven't been paying rent because of the way my house condition is. I've been living there so long, for so many years, holes in the walls, no water, no pipes, and I'm trying to see if I can get something done. Basically. And how's, how's, how's your landlord been with these, with these issues? Uh, he don't really know. He's taking me to court, but today I'm here to find out what's going on because I need to address some issues that he needs to know about. You know what I'm saying? They haven't been in a place to check it out, which is uncalled for. You know, I haven't paid rent for a while, but they don't know why I haven't been paying rent. So this is what I'm here to address these issues about. This line is unbelievable. I wasn't expecting this. It's, it certainly is. Now, you mentioned holes in the walls. What are some other issues that you're going through right now as far as... Um, uh, uh, conditions in, in your in your living space okay meaning well basically I'm not getting their support I mean they're not doing what they supposed to but they want rent you know I understand that but you gotta you gotta attend to things that you need to especially when you want this money I mean I've been here for 14 years not no one come in a tent it's, un it's unbelievable you know what I'm saying he does something about it. now it's time for me to address the issue you know right and 
you currently rent in Brooklyn? Yeah, I rent in Coney Island. I've been down for 14 years um, in a, a two-family house. I live on the top floor. Um, my, um, my landlord is, 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 is part owner with another company. You know what I'm saying? These people never come to see how this building looks. So today I have proof. I got pictures and everything. I want to see if I can maybe, you know, see if I can get some help here. That's great. Now, how about some other tenants? Are they with you today, or are you here by yourself? I'm Represent here along with my daughter, representing myself. And the other tenants' uh, feelings, are, are they on board with you? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, they had took me to court, but I, was, I had to make sure I had proof. So today I'm here to find out what, I can, what procedures I can take in to get back on the calendar. Excellent. And uh, as far as your landlord, you had mentioned that you know, he's going after you for, for rent. Right. Does he truly know or realize the conditions that you're living in right now? Apparently he does not know. I mean, he, they, they came and did a repair inside my kitchen. They took the pipes. I don't think that's going to look good on his behalf. You're going to take pipes and never repair it? I've been out of cold water for three weeks now. Cold water. Only hot water I have in my house. I can't live like that. You know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I have five children, you know what I'm saying? He don't look at that. I got holes all in the wall. I put plaster up. I'm putting money into the place, and it's still not, it's not, it's not making a difference. For so me. what you're saying is that you're doing your, uh, the, the, the work of the landlord, in a sense. Yes. You're putting plaster up to repair the yes. holes. And, and because I am not a, a, a professional, it's, it's holding. But being there so long, things do wear out. So, you know, I'm hoping that something works out for me. You know? well, now, one question. Have you asked for an inspection from HPD uh, regarding the pipe issue? No, I haven't. But today I'm going to see if I can get that done. You know, due to the fact that I wasn't here for the court day, but because I don't have no water, something have to be done. Now, is your landlord here today? No, he's not. He's not here today at all. Uh, I believe he was here Friday. I don't know. I'm going to find that all out today. You know, it's my first time, so I'm going on, going in here. Not too much knowledge, but I will find out today. Look at this line, man. Look, it's now past. See if you can find someone else. I'm joined by Karen Dockery. Karen, how are you today? Fine. Karen, can you uh, tell us a little bit why you're here today? Just to file a motion with my landlord. Um, and what uh, particular problems are we talking about here? Rent issues. Rent issues. Well, certainly that a lot of people, as you can see today, have some rent issues. Uh, Karen, could you go into a little more detail on uh, what you're going through? Uh, not that much. It's just I'm backed up on rent, so I'm trying to clear up the situation as of right now. Is uh, the certain conditions of, uh, uh, of your housing and whatnot uh, uh, in a negative manner or? No, it's not in a negative manner. It's more in a positive manner due to the fact I was laid off, so I got backed up in bills. So you're la you were laid off yes. and uh, you're currently obviously looking for work. No, I am employed as of right now. Yes, I am. And uh, as you had said, you're in court today because of... Um, I'm filing a motion to um, get an extension for rent payments. All right, excellent. Well, good luck today, Karen, and thank, thank you for joining us. No this is James Hayes for Rent Roy's News. I'm joined by Lenisha Ferguson. Lenisha, uh, welcome today. Hello, how you doing? Lenisha, why are you in court today? For non-payment of rent. Non-payment. What are the details of this? Well, actually, I have a very good case. So my apartment is infested with right, mice and roaches. They get in the bed, um, in the refrigerators. I have a one-year-old. She can't even sleep in her bed because of the mice. And I also have a disabled nine-year-old son who, upon moving into this apartment now, is a chronic asthmatic who his pediatrician claims it is due to the roaches, and he has to be on an as asthma machine six times a day, along with taking other medications for his asthma. I am able to pay them, but I refuse to pay them until they do something about the conditions in my apartment. Right. Now, mice and roaches, what has the landlord done about this? Nothing, absolutely. I've complained. I've asked to be put on a list where, and, um, what is that, where they come to your house and spray and things of that nature. I have to buy my own roach spray, put down my own mice traps. I've caught up to 10 mice in one day. Okay? It's ridiculous. The conditions are deplorable. 10 mice in one day? The mice get in the bed with you. They climb down the curtains and get in my daughter's bed. She's one years old. I just, I'm to the point where I just can't take it anymore. Well, these conditions certainly sound horrific. And uh, as you had said, the landlord has been no help at all. How is your experience in court today? 
My experience in court was um, basically fair. I have, do have another court date in order to come back. Um, they've given me a chance to obtain pictures and get other reports. Also, we have security in, my, in our building. My apartment was burglarized. While security was on duty, we have 24-hour security. Like I said, it's to the point, I'm not the only person that has complained. It's like 500 tenants, and all of us are just feel horrible living in conditions like this. Now, uh, you mentioned 500 tenants. Yeah. Um, how many other tenants are here today? Well, actually, I don't know how, how many were here today, but I did see a few other tenants that live in my building. Now, uh, yourself and the other tenants, are you looking to uh, get together? Uh, you know, there's definitely strength in numbers. Okay. Well, actually, we have tenants association meetings, but, you know, a large number of people don't show up, you know, for whatever the case may be. I don't know. I can't speak in their behalf. Well, fortunately, you did show up today, Lanisha, and you would certainly have some uh, very important issues. Um, were, you, were you represented by a lawyer today? No, I was not. I came on. I represented myself. And what's the next step in this process right now? Well, they've given me an opportunity to come back to court. We have another court date. And um, with that opportunity, I'm going to bring pictures. I'm going to bring other reports, proof, because today it was just by my word of mouth. You know, so I would like to, an opportunity to bring proof as to what I'm saying. I don't want them to just take my word. I want to show it in black and white. Well, thank you for joining us, uh, Lanisha. And uh, we certainly wish you luck uh, with all your endeavors. And the proof is certainly in the pudding. Good afternoon. I'm joined by Jody Light, uh, general practitioner. Jody, welcome. Thank you. Jody, can you tell us uh, and our viewers uh, some of your experiences here at uh, the Brooklyn Housing Court uh, in regards to tenants? Okay. Well, of course, the thing about tenants is that 90% of tenants do not have attorneys as opposed to landlords, where it's the other way around. 90% of them do. Um, and it's very difficult in any case to go unrepresented, but landlord-tenant law is a very technical area, and there's no way someone without legal training is going to know what some of those technicalities are that make the difference in whether they get to keep their home or not. And with those numbers, 90% to 10%, 90% in the favor of landlords, certainly uh, the tenants are um, uh, definitely uh, not aware of all their rights. There's no way they could be. I think the judges try to be fair, and I think most of them aren't biased, but they're dealing with a huge volume of cases. There isn't that much support, um, and the tenants often don't know to speak up, so people will come, uh, will settle cases that they could win a trial. Um, there are people who haven't paid rent, and they have rent impairing violations. I had a case in Manhattan a few years ago where a woman was withholding rent because she found a rat in her baby's crib. Um, I was able to keep her apartment and make the landlord do the repairs, but if she had been there on her own, she could have gotten evicted and had no home or could have gotten stuck paying full rent. And she was paying 1500 a month in, for a one bedroom in Harlem 10 years ago, and there was a rat in her baby's crib. A rat in her baby's crib. Now, in regards to the tenants, just so our viewers can know, what can tenants do or who can they contact uh, for more maybe legal advice or uh, to be more prepared for, for the court system? Um, there aren't a lot of resources out there. Some of the ones that have been around for a while are Metropolitan Council on Housing. Um, there are actually some good sites on the internet now. Um, there are some handbooks available at the court. Um, legal aid and legal services can represent people who are officially impoverished, but they have very long waiting lists. And of course, if you're middle class or working class, you're in a difficult position because you may not qualify for free legal services, but it's expensive to defend one of these cases. I have one in Manhattan now, um, a tenant who's been there for 18 years, and now that the building's going co-op, the landlord all of a sudden claims they have no knowledge that he's been there. Um, and it's been a lot of time in court, a lot of time on motion practice and research. Um, when we have to go to trial, there will be an awful lot of witnesses. So it's a lot of attorney hours and a lot of skills. Now, uh, in regards to the tenants and uh, legal fees, can, can, they, can they not be won? Uh, if they win the case, can they not be, uh, you know, uh, given back uh, to the lawyers? I mean, can't, isn't that included in the, um, in the case itself? It's not automatically, but often you can. Most leases contain a provision that the landlord gets um, 
legal fees if they sue and win. And even if it, the lease says that only the landlord gets fees, if the landlord is entitled to fees on winning a case, then the tenant is also. But you have to ask for it. If you don't ask for it, you've lost it. You mentioned uh, this tenant in Harlem. Um, how is she today and what's her situation? Um, she's absolutely fine. Um, baby's, uh, I think, in junior high now. Wow, junior high. And that's a baby with a rat in her crib. Yeah. Um, I was glad I was able to help her out, um, but it was just the luck of the draw that she happened to have me available um, as an attorney because I was representing her on an unrelated matter. Um, she would have been one of the tenants who might have fallen through the cracks otherwise because she did work full time um, and her income was above the level that would qualify her for legal aid. Well, Jody, uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm joined today by Lisa Armstrong. Lisa, welcome. Right, thank you. Lisa, why are you here today at uh, Brooklyn Housing Court? My landlord is trying to evict me. Your landlord is trying to evict you. What are the issues? The issues are um, rent arrears and housing repairs. Can we go into a little bit of uh, detail in regards to the housing repairs? Mm -hmm, sure. Uh, the housing repairs, I have nails in my floor, I have a window that's broken, and I have a seven-year-old daughter. Um, the sink doesn't work, it's clogged, so we have no working sink in the bathroom. Um, there's water damage done to the apartment below me because of the plumbing problems. This has gone on for eight years now, so I've been in court for eight years. Um, the, no one has gotten the landlord to fix anything. He never shows up to, to repair things. And I actually have two medical disabilities, so it's very hard for me to deal with the system. Now, this has gone on for eight years, you had said. What has the court done in regards to getting the landlord to do what he's supposed to do? All they do is make an agreement that he's supposed to come a certain day, certain time, and he doesn't. And what he, his excuse is that I don't let him into the apartment, which is not true at all. Um, I really feel that the system really works for the landlords and not for the tenants. Um, it's very hard to get a lawyer, and I haven't had a lawyer all this time. Um, and I've been at the point of eviction um, several times. And uh, where's your case stand right now as of today? Uh, the case stands where... Uh, I'm trying to get money from public assistance. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, and I'm not really sure. It looks like I may be evicted at this time. So you feel like, like the landlord is going to win in this case? Yes, I do. Um, what's your next step? Um, I'm going to public assistance right now, and I'm trying to get them to pay the rent. But given the two medical disabilities, it's, it has had a real impact on my life as well as my daughter's life. Um, and I actually don't feel that the judge this time, um, I asked for a guardian and he wouldn't give me a guardian and I really feel that he was siding with the landlord this time and so I don't think that was appropriate. Um, I had medical documentation and um, I really feel that the judge wasn't, you know, being fair in terms of, I really feel that I need a guardian after all these years. Now you mentioned being fair, has a landlord shown up within this eight, eight year span, ever? No, he has not. He is a very evil and cruel man. Um, he, I have an order of protection against him because I feel physically threatened by him. Um, and none of the state agents, city or state agencies have done anything to really help me, even the um, local oh, police fun. department. Um, I really had to push them to have him arrested and get that order of protection. Now Lisa, you had mentioned that you have an order of protection against your landlord. Yes, I do. Can you elaborate on that a, 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 for a little bit? Um, he has called me and hung up, um, and I have proof through my caller ID. He has come to my door, banged on the door, and scared my daughter. Um, he has thrown things that I put in the hall to bring downstairs. He has thrown my daughter's stroller in the garbage. He came into my apartment illegally, turned my water on, and said that I left the water on all day and sued me in small claims court. And he actually won, although I was on public assistance and so he didn't get any money. Um, this man has like really impacted my life over the, over the past eight years. And like I said, he has affected my, uh, the two medical disabilities that I do have. Now, Lisa, you, you had mentioned that you went uh, for your report to uh, a police station. What, what, what happened there? 
Yes, yeah, so I went to the 76 precinct, which I've done for over these past eight years. They're very aware of the problems in the building, and they're aware of me. I really felt that they haven't done anything to help me, and that's been another struggle. Finally, when the landlord did throw my possessions uh, into the hallway, um, I, call, I had a cell phone, I called the 76 precinct, they showed up, they acted like they didn't know anything about w what was going on and they weren't going to help me. So on my cell phone, I called One Police Plaza, I said I called 911, I'm not getting a good response, my landlord is here right now and something needs to be done. With that, they sent um, some captains from other precincts, I guess from the one police plaza, and then finally he was taken away. He was taken away and, and, and brought to the um, police precinct. Taken away mean arrested? Yes, he was arrested. So there's, there is uh, public records of uh, your landlord uh, being taken away, arrested, and have these papers been presented to the judge? No, they haven't. No, I mean, I, they told me papers would be sent to me, but nothing's ever been sent to me. So. Well, that certainly is something that you should pursue as far as evidence in your case. And uh, we want to thank you again for being on Rent Wars News, and uh, we wish you uh, your best uh, in your pursuit of uh, your rights as a tenant. Thank, thank you very much. This is James Hayes for Rent Wars News. I'm being joined by Adina Reed. Adina, welcome. Welcome. Dina, why are you here at uh, the Brooklyn Housing Court today? Because the uh, New York City Housing had brought me here for um, um, arrears that I hold for rent, of which I don't know anything about. I was in court here last month, and the judge, the lady judge, I forget her name, put the case off for today. I'm here since morning, and now they turned me to another floor, 501. I don't know if this case is going to be heard today or not. So you've been waiting all this morning, yes. and now you don't even know uh, what uh, resolution to your case. No, you, have to, have you have to do this later on today. Yes, I have to come back after lunch. They gave us lunch break. And how do you feel about how you've been treated here at uh, the Brooklyn Courthouse? Not good, because um, I'm innocent for what I'm coming here for, because I'm living in this project um, nearly 12 years. And I had no problem with anybody, just the people that they have working in the office. They don't talk to you, they don't come and talk to you, they say they write letters, but it's a lie, I don't get it. And then they bought me here that I hold rent. And the only rent I have for them, of which it doesn't hold, it is home, it's last month and this month. And now they turn over the cases of us all um, tenants to uh, collecting officers to collect the rent that it must pay. Like, when, when you paid one month, the other month must pay in the space of two weeks. Now, Adina, is this happening to other tenants in your building? And if, and if so, have you joined with them uh, to fight for your rights? Yes, it, it happens to other tenants because we're always having some problem with the housing. It's the people who work there because they handle us like wild animals, which it shouldn't be. Is there a tenants association in your building? No, don't know anything about that. The building keeps very rough at times, very bad. And how about the conditions at, at where you live? Do, is, how is the upkeep? It's a very, very bad building, but now I notice like once a week, they'll have the floor washed. The glasses all in the hallways are broken, out going all up the stairs from other people from the other other teenagers come from the other projects and break out these glasses right on the wall well I noticed a couple of months now they spray they spray the stairs down but other from that all the broken glasses and thing is right there and it's certainly dangerous for young for for young children and yourself yes, and it's a drug building drugs they do drugs a lot on the building it's always a problem it's a drug building now has this been addressed by anyone uh, especially the landlord or the uh, or the state it's a uh, housing authority business with it. It's, it's a project. And this is a building, very bad building. Very bad building. And we, I asked several times to ask the police to come through late nights because they would kick the lights out and break it and so forth. Right now in the hallway there, going up the stairs, there's no light for weeks, months now. There's no lights in the hallway. Now, um, and up the stairs. So certainly it's, it's a hazard for yourself and for young children. Now, yes. had, have you written letters? Have you, who are you talking to now uh, to get this taken care of? 
Well, I come to the court, and when I come to the court, because they brought me here towards rent, not paid, arrears that I don't know about, then I would mention to the judge what's happening. Well, I did want painting, but I got the painting last year, a couple of months ago. They did come and paint. Painting is all right now, but it's just that. The hallway and the stairs, they break out all the glasses and things, which is dangerous. Sometimes they're coming down, they dip the glasses on the floor. Is there security at all in the building? No. No, nothing like that. No security. Has security been promised at any point, or is it something that's, uh, that's going to be uh, put in? No, no security have ever been pro promised there, because I'm living there gone 12 years now, and I've never seen security. Some buildings, the tenant become um, patrols for themselves, I understand, but not in the building where I live. Now, compared to years ago, since you've been in this building for many years, has it progressively gotten worse? Yes, it was always the same from I've been there. Because when I went there first, they had put me there temporarily. They told me they would change me, but I never changed. So I just decided I'll stay there until I get a place to move out myself. Well, Adina, uh, thank you. And we certainly sympathize with your situation, but always keep in mind that tenants do have rights and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing a resolution uh, to your problems. And thank you again for joining us uh, for Rent Wars. Because now I come to court, I'm a person that, I'm a foreigner. I always pay my rent because you must live somewhere. But the way that they're doing it is that they've turned it over to a collecting officer, writing your dirty letters, talking about it, I'll kick you out. They come to the door, they cut the door, the locks off when they're ready and talk about they want to fix something. It's a lie. I try to keep a clean place. I'm a clean tenant. Well, that's very understandable, Adina. And thank you again today. You're and uh, we certainly wish you the best. And thanks for joining us here on uh, Rent Wars News. Thanks a lot. And I wish you all were able to do something to help us. Thank you very much. Thank you.